Hey guys, welcome to the video. This video is going to be me going over the upgrades that I just did to the electrical system in the Baja. This is the last piece that I need to install, so I'm going to go up and put this in there and then give you guys a little show and tell is what I did. Now, some of you who have watched this channel for a long time know that originally I made a battery box that went right over the transaxle here. And it was actually pretty cool. I really liked that. It was a really solid setup. It had the two lithium batteries stacked on either side. And when I had the air-cooled motor in here, that was awesome. However, when I had to add the radiator, that made it... I used to have the fuel cell where the radiator was. The electrical box was down here, and I had a door that would access that, and, and everything was great. But when I did the water-cooled and I had to add the radiator, and then that forced me to move the fuel cell up front here. That made it so that the electrical box was very, very difficult to get to. Um, and that was when I kind of outgrew that setup. However, uh, I ran it that way for at least a year. And it was fine, but it did kind of bother me how it wasn't super accessible. So, not too long ago, I found out about and purchased these Switch Pro devices which really kind of changed the entire layout of your electrical system because most of your electronics now happen with these two solid state devices. So what I did is for now, and, and again, remember, the stuff that I'm doing on this chassis right now is kind of, let's call it some research and development for the new chassis. I'm kind of, because I'm trying to move to a better shop later on this summer, I don't want to get too carried away with the two chassis right now. So what I'm doing is trying to vet out a bunch of concepts, a bunch of things that I wanted to do on the new chassis on this chassis so that if I do make the move and get a slightly bigger garage to work in, I'll have a lot of proven concepts now on this chassis and it'll be quicker and easier to go with a new chassis and just carry a lot of the stuff over. So what I've done at this point is I made this battery box which is kind of similar to the battery box that was in back before, but this one sits underneath my seat. It's got the two disconnects. Uh, this is a big improvement for me because before, the disconnects were mounted actually a little bit behind the fuel cell, one on either side. That's where one of them used to be. That didn't work out too bad when it was the air-cooled motor and I didn't have that fuel cell right there, but that became very cumbersome once I put that fuel cell there. So first of all, it's going to be real nice to have both disconnects right underneath the seat, right where I can get to them. <laughs> now this battery box is going to be permanent in this Baja, but I, I'm pretty sure in the new chassis, I think I'm going to make something like underneath the dashboard that will come down and have a little bit of room in here where I can set the batteries and the Switch Pro devices. I think that's what I'll do for the new chassis. But I'm not going to do that in this chassis. Aside from the Switch Pro devices, the concept of these, this battery box is the same, same setup that I had before. I've got the two batteries, and I've got the two disconnects. Because these are lithium batteries, and I can never drain them below 10 volts, I have these disconnects set up so that when you turn it off, and it's off right now, there's literally absolutely nothing connected to the batteries. There's a couple of grounds coming in here, but you'll notice there's only one positive cable that runs from the batteries up to the disconnect. So this is the, the lead coming from the battery. When the disconnect is turned off, there's literally nothing else on that battery. So there cannot be any parasitic drains or anything like that. So when I have these turned off, there's literally nothing on that lithium battery. Then I've got a, uh, let's call it a little bus bar here that connects the two. So if you turn on one disconnect, it livens up the entire system. It livens up this terminal, and then this carries it over to the next terminal. So both of the Switch Pro devices, whether you turn on one, the other, just one, whatever, everything gets power. Now what I typically do is I turn on both of them, but I do have it set up this way so that if I want to, I can just run one battery and still have everything be live. What I do like about this setup is with these Switch Pro devices, there's a boatload of wiring, like right underneath this, that 
is all where all of my wires tie in for the Switch Pro devices. And then I come over here and there's there's two plugs on each Switch Pro device. One plug for all the wiring. The other plug behind it here is for the actual switch, switch panels. Like these are all of my switches right here. And then there's just one plug with a four conductor wire that comes out of the back of this and plugs into this Switch Pro device. So if I just undo these two plugs, undo these two plugs, disconnect the positive cable right here, and then disconnect the negative cables from the batteries, then this entire battery box can come out. That's kind of a nice feature if I need to do some serious work on here to be able to just remove it. With the other battery setup, because I didn't have the Switch Pro devices, I had a distribution block. All the wires from the entire vehicle came in and were landed in there. And so that battery box was kind of permanently installed. This one is uh, a little bit more mobile, which I think is pretty cool. And then with the Switch Pro devices, there's also just one plug behind each of these. So actually all I have to do is unplug these, pull three wires off the oil pressure gauge, and then this just has a USB plugged into the back of it. If I just unplug all those devices, now my dashboard can come off. And the cool thing about that is that makes it so that my wiring is not as integrated into the body as it used to be. So I can take this off and then take the body off the vehicle. When I originally designed this chassis, I purposely designed it so that the body can come straight up. But when I, when I tied in all of the wiring, and especially how all the wiring tied into the dash, you could not take the dashboard off without extensive removal of all the wiring. And I wasn't going to do that unless it was absolutely necessary because that was a big project. With this, I've literally just got the three plugs and a couple of grounds and that dashboard comes off and then I think there's probably a couple of points where I would have to cut a couple of zip ties for a couple of wire looms but then the body comes off so that uh, that's gonna be very nice being able to easily pop that off so let me show you a couple of things a couple of changes that I took advantage of while I was doing this things that worked out fine on the previous electrical installation but Knowing that I had the chance to make a couple of changes, these are a couple of things that I did. Of course, everybody knows about the light wing, which I absolutely still love this darn thing, but I have a separate video on the installation of that, but that incorporates all new lights across the back. I'm thinking this will give me much more visibility, and I also went with amber turn signals, whereas before I had a module that would integrate the turn signals and the brake lights all into one. With this, I went with the amber turn signals, and I've also added some, these are marker lights and turn signals on the side of the wing. What that did for me is before I had tail lights and I had a center light right in the middle here. And then I had a, uh, a pretty nasty wiring harness running through here. That allowed me to clean all of this up. I still think I might get three little LED, just like marker lights. Um, one for visibility and two, the center light that I had here before would do, it would make like a red glow over the engine. I thought that was really cool. So I might incorporate something into there for that. I'm not sure. When I made the wiring harness here for the wing, I gave it a plug so that if I unplug this and then just take the bolts out of the wing, the wing comes off. And I actually added an extra plug here, which is just for marker lights, which will help tie into some of this, which I haven't done yet, which is for the license plate light and for whatever I end up making here, just for driving lights. There aren't gonna be any turn signals, or, turn signals or anything, but I think I'm gonna tuck something up real tight here just for a little bit of a glow at night. I got everything zip tied nice and snug all over the place. I'm a little worried about this wire possibly chafing onto this jagged piece of metal, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. I might add a little grommet or something there. You'll notice here I've got two zip ties just securing this to this pipe. My zip ties are not super tight when I do things like this, but in a situation like this, rather than just run one zip tie around there, that'll allow this wire to turn a little bit and the zip tie will cut into it. So whenever I do a setup like this, I run two just because it allows the wire not to be able to rotate and get pinched. Another thing I did is I, I had to run some of this wiring down here before all of my wiring ran underneath the chassis and it came up here 
and then here it would go up to the brake lights and all that. On this go around, I put down here what I had to, like the lead coming from the alternator, the power wire going to the oil pressure switch, and of course the, the two wires for the starter had to come down underneath here. But everything else I put up above. So you can see here I've got this loom running up. This is the wiring for all of the lighting. And this also has wiring in it for the computer for the fuel injection. So I did a couple of things there. I ran as much of the wire as I could um, on the top side of the chassis because I think moving forward that'll be a lot easier to access, a lot easier to keep my eyes on. Another thing that I did when I had all the wiring peeled back is I separated the wiring that goes to the ECM for the fuel injection and all of the wiring for my lighting. So now I've got actually two looms that run to the back. One is for the computer, one is for the lighting. So in the future, if I have to do work or if I'm changing things up, those are completely separate. Before I kind of had that all integrated into one and that made it when I was just working on it really, really difficult. So I separated all of that. Then of course I had some major changes on the dashboard. I'm not gonna go into detail on that because I did that in my first chit chat, um, but that cleaned everything up and gave me a real nice dashboard layout and it really gave me a clean wiring setup on the backside. So that takes care of some items that I took care of while I was in the process of kind of, if I'm gonna tear this apart, I'm gonna make a couple of changes for the better. So uh, let's hop in there and actually play with the switches a little bit and see what things do. All right, for starters, I gotta come down here and turn on my batteries. I got one key there, one key there. That turns on both batteries. All right, I just shut the garage door to try and make it so that you can see some of this. So when you turn on the batteries, it kind of wakes up the Switch Pro devices. Now they're ready to go. So the way I set this up, my top unit here basically, for the most part, handles illumination and the bottom one handles engine components. So this is my um, low beam headlights. This is my high beam headlights. This is my right turn signal. This is my left turn signal. This is just turns on the marker lights. This turns, up, turns on the reverse lights, which I don't have installed yet. This turns on the, the white halos on my headlights. They, al they also have amber halos, but I didn't hook those up. These white halos are so bright that on the trail, these would be really good, just like fog lights. And accessory right now is not connected to anything. This is a future switch that I have not decided what I'm gonna use yet. Then if I go down here, if I turn on gauges, that actually turns on power for the instrumentation. Actually, if you look, the, uh, the digital dash lights up when I hit that. And so this is the uh, GPS. And now the oil pressure sending unit is live. Um, gauges, when I turn that, I'm actually going to switch this up to here. I'm going to call this power because when I turn that on, it also sends battery power to the ECU. When I press this button, it sends power to the fuel injectors and whatnot. When I hit this button, it actually is like turning the key on, on your vehicle. And this actually cranks over the starter. This controls the fans. It doesn't necessarily control the fans. It just sends power to the fans. The, the engine computer still controls the fans, but with these two buttons, I can remove power from them. And this turns on the fuel pump. And this right now doesn't do anything. So essentially that's it for this video, guys. It's a little bit anticlimactic because you're literally looking at like two and a half weeks of just wiring and wiring and wiring, incredible amounts of wiring. However, I'm really happy with the end result. I'm really excited for the dashboard to be cleaned up and to have uh, the Switch Pro device controlling a lot of these things. I'm gonna play around with the programming the buttons and get it to do some special things. I showed you in a video a couple of clicks back this gives me the ability to make some of my lights, strobe lights, and things like that. I'm sure you'll see some of that in future videos. I might even do a video just highlighting what the, what the Switch Pro device can do because I haven't completely cracked into that yet. 
So I hope this helped you guys out, uh, motivating you to work on some of your projects, showing you some of the electrical that I've done on this. And thanks for watching the video, and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.